One of the many questions that are often asked is how do I start when I uh, study a piece of music and how do I translate that information that the score gives me into proper gestures. By proper I mean gestures that actually depict the music that's uh, in the score and not just limit themselves to beating time. Starting from the point of view that music creates a technique, then our source of truth is of course the score. To see one way to approach this, I chose a piece that is challenging for different reasons, the second movement of Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony. Hello everyone, I'm Jamila Griglio, I'm a composer and conductor, and welcome back to the channel. If uh, it's your first time here, this channel is all about classical music, and specifically about conducting and conducting technique. As usual, if you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, just uh, leave them down here, and I will do my best to address them in one of the next few videos. And now, let's move on with Tchaikovsky. The first challenge here is, of course, that this one is a mixed meter. So we have 5-4, which could be 2 plus 3 or 3 plus 2. How do we decide which one it is? Well, let's look at the score. The line, as Tchaikovsky wrote it, has slurs on top of the first two uh, quarter notes and then on the third, fourth and fifth uh, beat of the bar. That's the first indication. Also, in the second bar, we see that there is one half dotted note. A third indication is given to us, again, in the second bar by the double bass line, where you have uh, one uh, eighth note and the rest, and then another eighth note and two quarter rests. The second thing that we take into consideration is, of course, the tempo marking, allegro con grazia. All of this leads us to the conclusion that this piece is not to be conducted in five, but rather in two, and that this structure is two plus three. When we translate that into gestures, then we would have, if you have it to do it in a pattern, it would have a two patterns, right? However, given the fact that we have two quarter notes plus three quarter notes, the thing that we need to consider is that the height of the two and the height of the three are different. This is very important for clarity towards the orchestra. If you didn't pay attention to this particular thing, then you could end up doing one, one, two, three, or one, one, two, three. So basically, having the same height of the two and the three part of the bar would lead you to either wait one, two, one, two, three, to make up for the beat, the extra beat, or to curve one, two, one, two, three, and then uh, you would have uh, no place to go. Then what are you going to do for the bar after that? You're going to go down again. So you're, the, the point of reference that you create for your imaginary starting point gets lost. What is actually important to pay attention to is that the height of the two is not equal. So it's one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Your imaginary beats in a column is one, two, and one, two, three. So the height is actually different for the two parts of the bar. We're really starting from scratch. This is the first exercise that you can uh, focus on and making sure, maybe with a mirror, maybe with a camera, that uh, the height are different. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. And this you can try with the metronome, of course, and increasing as usual, you start slower and then you increase the speed of your exercise. When you do this exercise, you remember to pulse at the bottom of the stroke. Click, click, and the pulsing comes from here. Pling, pling. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. That is the main point of reference for the orchestra. When you have that ingrained, then everything else is going to come much easier. What is the next step? Well, let's take a look at the first two bars. We have dynamic mezzo forte, and then we have a crescendo in the second half of the bar, peaks on the downbeat of the following bar, and then a diminuendo in the second half of bar two. How do you translate that into gestures? Well, for instance, you could do one, two, one, two, three, moving forwards away from your body to create a crescendo, land on the downbeat so that your gesture basically grows, gets bigger with the crescendo, 
has a peak on the downbeat of the set of the bar number two and then comes back. So you do the you do you start, you do the crescendo, you peak, land on the peak of the crescendo, and then you do the diminuendo. This way, you accomplish both the tempo, the pulsing, of course, and the dynamic. On top of that, we've added one other thing. The type of gestures is legato. The music is legato, right? So we're not doing pa, pa, pi, pa, pi, pa, pi, pa, pi, pa. This kind of gesture does not reflect the music. How do you avoid chopping the music as you keep the pulsing at end the tempo? You apply a legato stroke. Pulse, continuation, continuation, continuation. When you pulse, you continue the stroke. You don't stop the gesture. You don't stop your arm or the movement. When you want to practice a legato stroke, then you click and you move. Click and move. Click and continue moving. So the wrist pulses. That's what initiates the stroke, and then the strokes continues seamlessly. And then you get... You have this kind of flowing of uh, your gesture. Another important thing is that uh, you don't need to pulse at every beat. This is not the type of music, the type of line that uh, asks for that. Pulsing at every beat would harshen your gesture and chop the music and chop the quality of, uh, of the music. It does have a negative effect on the sound itself. Going back to some of the previous episodes, learn when the orchestra needs a pulse and when it doesn't. In this case, of course, you need to give the first upbeat click. The first upbeat, by the way, would be in our 2 plus 3 schema, would be a 2 because you, the first half of the first bar is a two. Click. You would not need to be uh, a three. That would actually misleading. If you did then the orchestra, what the orchestra would understand would be this. It would slow down the tempo because that's the indication that you're giving with your first breath. What you want to do in this case is a prep of two. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. What I've shown you is also a different type of gesture because I'm not going vertical, I'm utilizing this space, moving away from my body to create a crescendo and coming back to create a diminuendo. One, two. Para, pira, dira, dira, dira. Moving on to bar two and three of this line, then uh, the same pattern, so to speak, applies to bar number three. However, on bar number four, we do not have a diminuendo. If anything, we sustain the sound on the second half of the bar. So starting from bar three, we do not come back just yet. We sustain the sound and we use that to our own advantage for what's coming right after. Because next we have bar number five in the same dynamic. And then we have a difference because on bar six, the first part of the bar has a staccato marking on the downbeat. The music changes. And then we move on with legato, a fortissimo marking, and then a diminuendo. So, after you sustain the sound, you can make a staccato gesture, and then you move on in the second part of the bar, which is a long note again. The staccato gesture uh, is achieved by stopping the stroke. So, pa. Pari, pari, short, long in this case. Pa, pari, pari, literally, click and stop your gesture, retake, and then move on. Pa, pari, pari, piram, piram, ta, ya, pa, 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 pi, pa, pi, pa, pi, pa, pi. 
when you put it all together, it becomes something like Piran pirarim parim pa diminuendo, Piran pirarim parim pa sustained sound, Piran pirarirari short, pam param pari long, Piran pirarirapi, yapapapapipapipapipapipapi. Again, on the last bar of the phrase, there is a diminuendo, there is really no need to keep beating time, papapapapipapi, but you can just come back, retake the stroke at the end of the bar, and then re engage the orchestra cueing, of course, the woodwinds uh, that are coming in uh, in the following bar. One thing that you can do, and that you might have noticed in between, is that sometimes I do retake the stroke at the end of the bar for extra clarity. For instance, This allows you to give more emphasis and mark the fortissima in this case, following the gesture of the music itself. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you have any comments or any questions, please put them down in the comments, even just one or two words like upbeat or legato stroke or staccato stroke or anything that you might have a doubt on. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you will get notified every time a new video comes out. And take a look at my website where you can find a lot of different articles on analysis and technical issues. Till next time, have fun with music, have fun conducting, and be kind to yourself. Ciao!